not running, it will restart it, but it can do things like actually do HTTP requests to see if a bit of content is there on a web page, and if that content isn't there, e.g. if the server is not responding, it will restart it. Finally, keeping stuff as it is, um, you know, these tools are really, really great. Uh, they, they kind of need a lot of setting up. Um, as I say, I'm not kind of a developer as much, so I can't really go through exactly how to set them up. Um, but if you just want a quick and easy way to speed up your site, just to kind of finish off with really, um, a CDN is a really good way of doing that. So uh, just a basic um, example now of how you can speed up your site using a CDN by delivering your static content from the CDN instead of uh, from your central web server, uh, which is kind of easy as pie, I like to think. Um, you know, contrary to popular belief, it doesn't need uh, a lot of setup. I mean, you know, when we first started looking at CDN, we were like, well, is this going to need us to kind of upload content to some sort of special server or some sort of special area? But it really just acts like a mirror. So you upload your website structure and your content exactly as you would. So as a quick example, if you've got a, 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 you know, an image called logo.gif, which is stored on that directory, you then set the CDN up and it stays the same. It just literally takes that file and copies it into exactly the same directory, store, uh, uh, directory structure. But instead of being stored on your web server, it's cached on the edge locations of the CDN. Uh, and then you just update your links on your site um, and create a CNAME record. So you have your cdn.yourdomain.com pointing to the CDN, um, which is obviously good for branding. And that's just a case of like updating all your static content and away you go. Um, so I think there's just like a example. So that would then be loaded from the CDN. Previously, you'd probably just cut that first domain out and just load it locally. Um, you know, as I say, update your DNS and that's it. So that pretty much concludes everything I've got to say today. As I say, wanted to just run through um, a few of the tools that we use. And also, if you use a CMS, the uh, updating this stuff, on a, you know, updating your site to a CDN is really, really simple because you don't really need to go through your code manually and update anything. Uh, I know WordPress and, and Drupal both have plugins which just do everything automatically for you. Um, we've got a few tutorials on our CDNFI YouTube account which will show you how to do this. And uh, I think that's it. So thanks for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes? So basically had a problem where you've got a lot of performance issues by you know people just absolutely slaying your service for using content and then you come to the end point where you've got a CDN that you've, you've basically implemented yourselves. How did you get from, oh god we've got a performance problem, to writing that? Because I assume it was an intermediary step. Did you examine other ones or the, was it very much the case that you just went, right, let's go to a bunch of servers in different places? No, we didn't build the CDN for our own purposes. Um, the CDNFI product was born out of um, when we started looking into CDNs. We started calling around a lot of the big ones like um, Akamai and Edgecast, which are these kind of big corporate uh, US efforts. And the sales processes aren't really that friendly uh, to, to smaller companies. So you can't just kind of enter your card details, sign up and get started straight away. You have to ring them up. They send you a 50 page PDF outlining all their services and all the hidden costs and all this sort of stuff. And it kind of wasn't really very appealing to us. Um, in the end, we, we kind of found uh, something called Mac CDN, which is, which is great. And obviously, there's Amazon Web Services as well. And they're sort of more geared towards smaller companies. But we kind of spotted a bit of a gap in the market. Uh, CDN market's growing. It's very big. So CDNFI was kind of born off that realization. But as I say, to start off with, when we, when we first implemented a CDN, we weren't using our own. We were, we were using uh, another one. So with the CDN that you've built for CDNFI, yeah. is it mostly sort of just the hosting on you know non backbone or is it very much that you've got in the data centers that are on the internet backbone in, in the various places? Because from looking at the graph that you've got on the website, mm. um, it seems you've got you've got a lot of locations um, sort of comparatively to the amount of backbone space that with I've seen. So is it is it a good uh, sort of breadth of speed versus you know availability or yeah. just put in service where you can get them? The CDNFI is bought, uh, built on a, a new platform, which is a federated CDN. So the pop locations are a combination of uh, free capacity on various clouds, which are dotted around the world, and our own servers. So 
as part of our existing business, um, we, we buy bandwidth in bulk for, for our radio uh, service, internet radio services. Um, so we've kind of got some good relationships with, with various providers so we can, we can get bandwidth quite cheaply. Um, but then in kind of lesser used locations for CDNFI, we, we as I say, use uh, available capacity on, on other people's networks effectively. Yeah. Um, have you done any work with Magento? Yeah, I mean, um, I think Magento, like, uh, we, we don't, we've never used Magento ourselves as such because we're not really like an e-commerce uh, business in that sort of respect. Um, but, you know, like WordPress and, and Drupal, Magento is effectively a CMS, isn't it, for, for shops, for, for online, uh, for web shops. Um, so, you know, it's really, really easy to update. Um, the great thing about systems like that is, you know, you, you have kind of central configurations, so you can change a few options and they can be effectively rolled out across the t entire site with minimal effort. Yeah. With CDNFI, we don't have um, a public API just yet. As I, as I think I mentioned at the beginning, we only launched on the 22nd of April, so it's still you know, it's less than a month old. Um, we, we're starting to build the first version of our API at the moment. Um, the reason that is is because with CDNFI, we're sort of targeted towards startups um, rather than uh, developers. One of the things, for example, when we were looking at CDN that put us off about Amazon Web Services is um, it's quite techy. It needs, you know, there's a lot of documentation to read through and a lot of it's API based. Uh, so we kind of wanted to stay away from that because it's something, you know, it's like a big learning curve in a sense. If, you, if, you, if you're already comfortable with using Amazon Web Services, uh, for example, then you wouldn't have a reason to kind of stray away from that. But for a lot of companies, you know, for example, we were just looking for a really quick solution that effectively we could implement within sort of a space of a couple of days because we had this major problem um, and, you know, we don't want to have to spend a lot of time working out a solution. Is there a massive difference in um, hosting dynamic content? Like, so sort of mm. stress that the static content is the, the quick way. Um, what do you mean, sorry? Uh, is there a vast difference in how difficult it is to mm. um, put some dynamic content on CDN? Well, when you're dealing with a, a dynamic content, CDN is specifically for serving static content, okay? So your dynamic requests are generally passed through the CDN onto application servers, which kind of uh, sit behind it almost, like in sort of that diagram. That's what I'm into. Yeah. Is that sitting, how the two interact? The, they don't interact as such. I mean, there's different ways of, of integrating them. Um, I'd say overall, um, serving dynamic content and scaling dynamic content is, is more tough than, than say, scaling static content. Scaling static content is quite easy because, as you say, you can just put a CDN in place and it immediately offloads a lot of the bandwidth and a lot of the requests hitting your web server onto a you know, distributed platform. Um, when you're dealing with a lot of dynamic requests or you know, in the case of like the R app where we've got a lot of Ajax stuff hitting our server constantly in the background, um, you have to be a bit more clever and uh, like I mentioned a couple of the tools that we use like caching and, and all that kind of stuff has to be taken into consideration because it offloads your database and it's just like again you can kind of go into this situation where you've got lots and lots of different layers but they all have to add up into kind of one solution um, and each layer kind of works in tandem with another layer so you've got your database and then you've got your cache and then you've got your front end uh, sorry your back end code and you know and then front end code. So for CDNFI, yeah. um, we've, we've priced it very competitively. Um, the, this, the, effectively, it's a pay-as-you-go model, so um, clients can get started for a little as $30 uh, kind of as a top-up, which will get you, I think, 500 gigs of bandwidth. And you can obviously buy more bandwidth as and when you need. Um, we've got, effectively, we buy bandwidth in, bandwidth in blocks, so you can buy a small amount to start up with, off with, you know, and, and scale as and when you need, which is really, as I say, aimed towards startups, smaller companies, freelance developers, um, independent software houses, that kind of thing. And how does that compare to Amazon's costs? Well, we've undercut Amazon. We've tried, to, as I say, we try to be really competitive. Um, so, for uh, on a per gig basis, I think Amazon are charging about twelve cents. I think we're charging about six. Is that right, Mike? 
Yeah. And who are your customers so far? Um, well, we've got a variety of interests. I mean, how many customers have we got? Agent, well, it's about well, 300 <coughs> initially. Yeah. Um, agencies, small agencies that are dealing with, um, they build a lot of Facebook, Facebook apps and stuff like that. Um, <coughs> a couple of different blogs, um, remix photos and stuff. It's, it's a pretty wide range mm. of people, actually. Fashion startup who are uh, sort of scaling their kind of e-commerce site. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's pretty broad. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I mean, as I say, we're not sort of going after a specific group. As I say, it's a new project, so we're still, we are still finding our feet, uh, and we are still um, learning, learning about our customers' requirements ultimately as well. Um, but we try to make it, you know, just very simple to use. Uh, we've got a video which shows how to implement a CDN onto a basic website within, was it three minutes, five minutes, yeah, something like five. that, within yeah a couple of minutes. So, um, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean it's you know it's it's, a, it's up on YouTube, so uh, you know you're welcome to sort of check it out. Um, you, cause the famous five minute install for WordPress actually takes someone new to web development. Uh, it doesn't take them five minutes. Yeah. Long, uh, you know, you've got all the tools lined up. You know what you're doing. You yeah. Possibly do it in five minutes <laughs> and document all the configuration. But yeah, I mean it's subjective. It's, uh, we have we have the the same. Someone who's coming to something quite yeah quite new. It varies, doesn't it? Frustrate people a lot when you say it's going to take five minutes, and actually, if it's all new to them, it can take a while longer. We have we have exactly the same issue with with um, our, the other side of our business, the radio stuff, because. You know, you have some clients who are quite technically enabled, and they'll whisper it without any issues. And then, you know, you'll have some other clients who, you know, whatever, whatever you show them, however many tutorials you give them, or however long you spend on them with the phone, uh, you know, they still just it just doesn't make sense to them. So, you know, as you say, it can be frustrating for the end user. Um, I think with CDNFI, we kind of, I suppose, we are assuming to a certain extent that a um, fair amount of our customers will be fairly te technically enabled. Mm. If you've not got API stuff yet, yeah. I'm assuming that you bulk upload files at the moment uh, by some sort of web interface or something. Um, no, the how, how do you go about coming with updates and things like that? So obviously every now and again stack files will change. Mm. So how are you dealing with like actually pushing the content out to the, the edge? Yeah, so the content is is is, is pulled from uh, your central server. Uh, so if you upload a file on your, on your site, uh, a customer then accesses that file. If it's not on the cache on the edge of location, cache on the edge of location, it then take, retrieves a copy so from you your server. Form, mm -hmm. you get yep. That file will then expire every now and again, so it will refresh the copy. So how are you, how are you differentiating between actual static files, like a, an actual GIF file, say, mm. or a GIF file that something like Compton Gomez would generate as a sort of fake file to you know, cash out to say, I've done this request, you then do it, I do. The way the, way the, um, the CDM will view it is just as, as an end user will view it in the browser. So um, the edge location will make a call to your server, whether that's served up literally as a static file or, or dynamically through some sort of script. Um, but obviously what is delivered what would be delivered to the end user will be obviously delivered to the to the cache location, the edge location, and and therefore that will just be stored and, and sent to the end user. So how are you dealing with say a file that changes every twenty four hours? Say we have the time in a big JPEG. Yeah. Uh, how is that dealt with? Well, uh, at the moment, um, you can uh, effectively set headers on that file.